Good morning, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with a Hurricane Outlook and discussion recorded on June 15th, 2023, recorded on 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot of things to talk about today, including a rare June tropical cyclone that could be forming in the main development region heading towards the Lesser Antilles over the next couple of days. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this morning, we noticed that it is relatively quiet across the basin currently. We do have a few tropical waves emerging off the coast of Africa. And this in particular, this wave right here that I'm circling with my cursor, this is the wave that we're going to be watching as this traverses the main development region over the next couple of days. And we'll talk about this in greater detail here in a second. But we also have some showers and thunderstorms ongoing across the intertropical convergence zone right here heading in towards the northern coast of Central America or South America rather. And this will bring some heavy rainfall and gusty winds from time to time. The potential for some flooding as well even could occur across Trinidad and Tobago as well. But elsewise across the rest of the Atlantic Basin it is quiet at least for the time being. So taking a look here at the tropical weather outlook issued from the National Hurricane Center as of 8 a.m. this morning, we do have an area of disturbance that is moving off the coast of Africa today. And this will be moving generally westward and west-northwestward across the tropical main development region throughout the next several days. The National Hurricane Center is now giving this area a 20% chance of tropical cyclone formation over the next seven days as this begins to traverse closer and closer towards the northern part of the Antilles here. And just real quickly, in the eastern Pacific Basin, we are still monitoring two systems, nothing of significance to land at this point, both systems with a 20% chance of development over the next seven days, and conditions seem to remain at least marginally favorable for some isolated development out here, but no threats to land as of this time. So what we're looking at here is the GFS 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground and overlaid here we're looking at the mean sea level pressure in these contours. So this is starting today in the early morning we noticed the tropical wave emerging off the coast of Africa during the day today and this wave already has a lot of spin to it and we'll talk about how these waves form in greater detail here in just a second. But as this wave continues to chug along towards the west, it gains enough energy here from the underlying ocean, and then it is able to develop a coherent vortex here, it seems, within just a matter of about two to two and a half days in the tropical Atlantic. And this is pretty far to the east for tropical cyclone development, especially this time of the year. So if something does form out here this early, this is going to be a big indicator in terms of what is going to happen later in the season, I do believe. Irregardless, though, this tropical wave continues to move westward. And at this point here, this is valid on the 19th. So this weekend, this seems to be a full-blown tropical cyclone in the forecast model. Although it will struggle as this eventually gets closer here to the Lesser Antilles within the next about 8 to 10 or so days and that is going to be due to stronger upper level winds and drier air preventing significant intensification of the system as we get closer to the Caribbean. And we're going to go ahead and talk about that right now. So what we're looking at here is the GFS and we're looking at a boxed sounding for the representative area at forecast hour 78. So this is on June 15th at 2 a.m. or I'm sorry, valid June 18th um, at... 8 a.m. in the morning and we notice that this tropical system right here is enveloped within a very moist atmosphere fairly moist throughout the entire column and is certainly a different forecast sounding from what we were seeing yesterday with relatively low shear throughout the entire column the only thing that does worry me a little bit is up here in the middle part of the troposphere uh, roughly from about 700 millibars to about 400 millibars. We have winds here on the order of 15 to 20 knots um, across the area, which does indicate that there will be a little bit of tilting of the vortex with height. So that might disallow for significant organization of a system out here, at least initially. And that is going to play a part in how the evolution of the system is once it nears the Lesser Antilles. Of course, if this is a weaker system, according to the GFS, uh, this is going to have track impl implications as well. 
And in fact, we look out here at the five day period just a few days later on June 20th here. So that's the course of two days. We have much drier air in the mid and upper levels here. And not only do we have shear beginning to increase, we have surface winds here at about 15 to 20 knots. And then just above that here, we have lighter winds and then we have winds coming out of the opposite direction up here towards the upper part of the troposphere and closer to the stratosphere. But we notice this mid-level dry air here combined with the shear, this is going to actually promote thunderstorms that go up initially. They're gonna go up and they'll pulse. And what that's going to do is bring down a lot of this cooler and drier air down to the surface and you'll need the surface to work a lot harder now to generate this convection to generate thunderstorms that actually sustain themselves. And so the atmosphere has to work a lot harder and the atmosphere doesn't like that. So this is going to limit the overall structure and intensification of this system as it approaches the Lesser Antilles. And in fact, two days later from that, we notice that again, that drier air has been indeed transported down to the surface and you end up with a profile that is relatively unfavorable for significant organization here. This is the end of the seven day period. And we look at the European forecast model. It's very similar with its initial conditions being much drier here, which is a little bit closer to what we're actually seeing currently. But this mid-level dry air is going to play a huge role. It does moisten a little bit and slightly warm at the surface. But overall, you're going to be having some of these winds transport that uh, surrounding atmosphere into the system. And these thunderstorms are going to have a harder time working in the environments if this were to verify. Now, overall, the European ensembles that from last night's run are pretty aggressive with tropical cyclone Genesis at this point. Notice that Genesis occurs roughly within 78 to 90 hours from now. So we're talking about late this weekend, heading into Sunday afternoon and evening. We could be talking about a tropical cyclone. And then within five days from now, we're talking on uh, late Monday night going into Tuesday morning. It seems like we have a clustering here of members here from the European Ensemble suggesting an area of low pressure, potentially a tropical cyclone, uh, roughly at about 40 degrees west here, which is very far to the east for tropical cyclone genesis this time of year. But nonetheless, the conditions do look anomalously favorable. And then we start to diverge, excuse me, we start to diverge as we get towards the island chain here, where we could end up dealing with a multitude of different possibilities at this point. So right now, there is an area to watch for the island chain. Again, who's at risk? Mainly the northern part of the island chain for now and the U.S. British Virgin Islands all the way down to near Barbados. Again, this is highly dependent on what happens over the next several days. And this is just a broad overview. But generally speaking, the European has a track that is, the European operational has a track that is much further to the south and would cut just north of Barbados and dissipate here ultimately in the Caribbean graveyard, as, as it's called, where the GFS actually lifts this system up north away from the USVI and away from the island chain and actually becomes a hurricane out here in the subtropical Atlantic well to the north of any land. So this is certainly, these two possibilities here definitely are within the realm, something to watch. Again, I'm not overly concerned about any significant threats at this time. And again, these models will change. So this is just a very broad overview of what's to expect over the next several days. The overall pattern is going to remain relatively similar. Uh, we're looking at the 500 millibar geopotential heights and we'll actually look here at the 500 millibar height anomalies. Again, generally speaking, we're gonna have a ridge that is going to be sitting in place throughout the next while. And this is what's going to drive our system westward through the time being. But we will have a weakness in the ridge that does develop here within about day six and seven that might promote the storm to turn northward if it's a little bit stronger or might keep it south and west if this continues to be weaker. And that's all associated with the beta drift and a whole bunch of other different things. But generally speaking, again, we're going to be monitoring this area very closely throughout the next several days.
So I wanted to just provide a brief context in terms of how these tropical systems, especially from these tropical waves, end up developing into tropical cyclones. Generally, they start off as thunderstorms that you would typically see over land and grow into mesoscale convective systems over Africa. These waves are, these MCS complexes are no different from what we would see in normal mesoscale convective systems across the United States. And as they translate westward in the prevailing westernlies, what you actually end up noticing here is the mesoscale convective system will decay, leaving behind this mid-level vortex. This is a spin in the atmosphere roughly at about 10 to 15,000 feet aloft. And this actually is what was tr it, what is translated over the water. And if the sea surface temperatures are greater than 26 and a half degrees Celsius, then we actually will start to get more thunderstorms to generate out here as this moves over the water. And this will create a rising column of deep tropical moisture to be accelerated into the vertical throughout a vertical depth. And if the wind shear is relatively light and if sufficient moisture in the background environment exists, this system then can go on to become a tropical cyclone as convection reforms over this, this mid-level vortex and begins to stretch it down to the, to the surface there, which then ultimately creates that warm core tropical system that we're so used to. So this is just kind of a very brief, broad overview of how these systems end up developing. Also just wanted to quickly touch on another significant severe weather event that is expected to shape up today out across portions of Oklahoma into Kansas and the northeastern Texas region. There is a moderate risk for severe storms today, generally from about Oklahoma City and Woodward, Oklahoma to near Durant, Oklahoma, with a level 3 out of 5 enhanced risk for severe storms from near uh, Garden City all the way down to just north of Dallas, Texas with a large slight risk today. Overall tornado parameter is sitting at 10% out across portions of southern Kansas, northeastern Texas, and into Oklahoma with damaging wind and hail being the primary threats for severe storms today. So we will be watching this very carefully and that risk for severe storms goes all the way down to near the Interstate 4 corridor. This actually goes all the way down to near the Orlando Metro today. No tornado risk out here, but there is a tornado risk along the Interstate 75 corridor just to near Gainesville. The main threat today for Central Florida is going to be damaging wind and the potential for some large hail as these storms just graze the far northern part here as the dynamics are way better off towards the north and west. All right. So that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. God bless, take care, and I'll talk to you guys again some more over the next several days.